Seek the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name together together i don't know about you but this is our time and morning and fellowship that we come and we exalt his name together and i'm so grateful i'm so thankful for another sunday morning um, that we can come and exalt his name together let us pray god we thank you for another day god we thank you for another sunday that we uh, can come into your house of worship God, we thank you for how you've been so good to all of us. God, we thank you for how you kept us all week long. And so, God, you know the names that are on our sick and shut-in list. God, we just ask you just to touch and do something amazing inside of their life. God, let them know that miracles still take place. God, let them know that healing still take place. God, let them know, God, that you are still their God. And so, God, now we're coming forward to worship this morning. And God, we ask you just to enter into our sanctuary on this morning. God, have your way with inside of this herbs. God, have your way in our prayers. Have your way in our singing. Have your way in our, your, in our preaching. God, do what only you can do. God, we are expecting you to do something amazing on today. God, we are expecting you to show up in this service on today. God, we want you to know, God, that you are welcome here on this day. God, allow your spirit to just move in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, we want to thank each and every one of you um, who are tuning in online, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, those of you who are on conference call, those of you who are inside of the sanctuary on this morning, um, we are just excited that God continues to move and God continues to do great things in our lives. Um, 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 continue to pray for um, the members are here um, in free union. Continue to pray for uh, uh, um, Sister Tini. Continue to keep her inside of our prayers. Uh, um, continue to uh, 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 um, pray that God will continue to move and God will continue to do some healing and God will do some comforting um, in our church. Um, 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 continue to pray for. We just talked about it this morning. I had a moment. Yes, thank you, Doc. Uh, sister, continue to pray for Sister Florence um, and her family um, as they're going through. Uh, but we just need to continue to pray that God will give us the strength. Um, um, I know, you know, now I know what a senior moment is. I um, haven't always known what those were, um, but we're grateful to God that we can continue to be how God would have us to be. And so we're thankful, 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 um, thankful for the face that I haven't seen in the past about three weeks. Um, thankful for being here on this morning. And so we are excited about what God is doing. Just in case you don't know it, this is the fourth Sunday in the month of January. Um, I know a few weeks back. Uh, when this year started, I was saying that it was just the beginning of the year, but now it's already the fourth week, uh, the fourth Sunday in this year. Um, this time, it seems as though it's just moving on by. Uh, but we're grateful to God that we are still here and we're still a part of what God is doing in our lives. And so I'm going to hurry up and get out of your way. Uh, we got Dr. Hortense Hinton Jackson here um, this morning who is going to come forth and sing. Um, I might have to help her this morning, so y'all pray for me um, and pray for her that she don't call on me um, to help her out. But I might have to help her out on this morning, um, and she's going to sing. Um, and, 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 and who's praying, Dick? Deacon Holmes? Deacon Holmes is praying today um, in his cowboy blue. Uh, he said he don't care. Y'all can talk about him all he want to. He still got his cowboy blue on today. Um, so we are grateful, 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 grateful to God that God is still moving and God is still doing great things inside of our lives. If you haven't already yet, um, I know some of you woke up early this morning like me, but if you haven't already yet, gave God some thanks on this morning. Amen. Begin to give God some thank you on this morning. Just thank him for who you are inside of your life and how he continually to do uh, um, great things in your life. I, I was listening to the radio this morning, Doc. I know you normally listen to it. Um, there's a song that came on this morning. It said, hide me. Um, and then he said, hide me, God, from, from the different things on the side of this world that's going on. But then the part that always get me every time I hear that song, that every now and then, God, you got to hide me from myself. 
And so we have to have an understanding that God has to do some great things in our lives. And we continue to do um, wrong things. But every now and then, we even need God to hide us from ourselves. But God is a great God. And God is a wonderful God. And God is still moving in our midst. And so I'm... on your phones that you could use now and over the course of the pandemic I had occasion to always look up different meditations and they will give you a prompt tell you a little phrase or something to say and I found one that took me to the heights <laughs> and it was just saying to sit there and say thank you nothing else <laughs> <laughs> just say it. thank you however many times you could say it just just keep saying that over and over and as you and as you're doing it your mind runs over all of the things <laughs> all of the things <laughs> that you could be thankful for you never stop saying it you just keep sitting there and I really understood that that saying that the old folks say if I had a thousand tongues I could not thank him enough because there's just so much so much that he's he's doing we don't even know what he's doing <laughs> half the time we're not even aware of how he's keeping us and how he's protecting us and I was telling Deacon Dinkins how I I get so frustrated in the morning if I can't find something or I drop something and I can't get it back or I said that kind of stuff drives me crazy and I'm running all around the house looking for something and I don't know why but he's keeping me from something <laughs> I've learned that he's slowing me down because I'm trying to be too fast <laughs> trying to go where I'm going or do what I'm doing he's just slowing me down so I'm thanking him now for the stuff that frustrates me. I got the nerve to be frustrated. <laughs> Whoa, when he's keeping me. Bless the Lord. Ah. One thing the pandemic has done is it's given us a lot of time. <clears throat> time to focus on what really matters. What really counts and what you don't need and what you can do without. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you find out that you don't really need a lot. You just need him. <laughs> you just need him. Mm.
dreams seem to be fading fast. You see, I'm all burnt out. Don't think my strength's gonna last, so I'm crying out. Crying out to you, oh Lord, you're the only one, <laughs> you're the only one who is able to pull me through. That's why I want to talk to you, just you. Uh. Ask you for some guidance, cause only you, only you. Why I wanna talk to you? I open up my my heart. Show me how to do things your way. Yeah. Don't let me make the same mistakes. Over and over again Your will be done And I'll be the one To be sure that it's carried out For in me I don't want any doubt That's why I want to talk to you Just need a little guy You ought to give God some praise on this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Um, we again, we are so grateful uh, for this part of this service. Thank you, Doc, for blessing us. Thank you, Deacon Holmes, uh, for your prayers. Um, we just want to thank God for all that God does in our lives. Um, those of you who have been fasting with me this month, we're almost there. Uh, we only have a few more days left, and, and then we'll uh, be praying about how we're going to fast again for the Lent. Um, but God is going to do some amazing things in our lives because of our trust in him. Um, and as I, I look up, hey, Sister Winner, it's so good, so good to see you um, on this morning. If you have your Bibles with you on this morning, turn with me to the book of Luke, um, Luke chapter 6, um, verses 46 through 49. Um, some of you have, have probably already have it pinned in your, in your, in your phone, and your Bibles, because we've been this way um, for the past few um, Sundays. And we are um, um, thanking God for how God has been blessing us. Um, Luke chapter 6, um, verses 46 um, through 49. Um, good seeing you, Sister Michelle. Um, we're still praying for Brother Thomas. Um, good seeing you, Sister Pat. We didn't see you the past few Sundays. Um, Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. Uh, my version of the Bible says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, 
and do not do what I say. As for everyone who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the, rock, the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the torment struck the house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my word and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a, grand, a house on the ground without foundation. The moment the torment struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Again, for a subject this morning, for a subject this morning, building the church better. Building the church better. Let us pray. God, we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. God, you know your servant. We have been wrestling with this message all week long. And so, God, give me the words to say to your people. God, even though sometimes I, I might get, don't want to say what you want me to say, but God, give me the strength to be bold and be able to stand boldly on what you declared for me to say. And so, God, we just ask you, God, just to do what you do. God, show up and show out in this service on this morning. God, have your way. God, have your way with me. And so, God, when I open up your mouth, God, that, that you will be able to do something amazing with me. God, hide me behind the cross so people will see less of, uh, of Keith, but they will see more of you. And so, God, you know your servant when I preach your word. I speak a little fast. God, slow me down so your people can hear a word from you. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Lord, let the power of your Holy Ghost fall on me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Building the church better. Um, church, um, I don't know if you remember, uh, back in December the 26th in 2004, um, I know you I might not remember, but um, December the 26th in 2004, an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0 rocked Southeast Asia, a current just off the coast of Indonesia, and sent a huge tidal waves called tsunamis crashing into the coast of Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and India. People called it one of the worst natural disasters in history, and it really was a terrible disaster. But as some of you know, that this wasn't the first and this will not be the last disaster that would take place inside of our world. That every now and then in lives, that wind will come. That every now and then in life, that storms will blow. That every now and then in lives, that seas will rock. And it seems as though that we're having some tsunamis inside of our lives. But because such disasters are part of life, Various parts of the world that are prone to such disasters take steps in preventing and hinder these damages and loss of life in such events that might occur. Japan is one of the most earthquake prone countries in the world. They have more earthquakes than they do in California. Due to this, during the past 40 years or so, Japan has developed some of the most sophisticated earthquake-proof architects in the world. These buildings are expensive, but Japan knows how to build houses and skyscrapers that will not fall inside of earthquakes. They may swerve, sway back and forth, uh, um, but they will not fall unless a huge crack opens up underneath of one of these buildings, these buildings will not fall. They're going to great length and to great expenses to protect their, pe their people and provide safe houses and safe buildings in world places to protect the citizens that are in their area. That even though it might sway back and forth, it even might rock forward and rock back, no matter how many winds may blow, the, earth, the, the building will not fall. As we dive back into the end of Luke chapter 6 and continue with Christ's disciples' manualship, uh, a manual, uh, we, we need to have an understanding that we learn that exactly what God wants us to do in our lives. 
just like storms that's going to take place, just in case earthquakes are going to happen in your life, even though natural disasters that's going to occur, we need to be like the folk in Japan, that we need to make sure that our foundation is built on a rock, that no matter how many winds may come, no matter how many winds may blow, that we might even sway back and forth, but our building will not fall. No matter how many bad it might look, no matter how many disasters, no matter how many tsunamis, Tsunamis come inside of our lives, then no earthquake will make our building fall. And I know some of you this morning have some earthquakes in your life. And most of you already know I'm not talking about the earthquake that might come and shake the ground. But I'm talking about the earthquakes that might come and try to shake your life. I don't know about you, but there are some storms that are raging inside of your life. I don't know about you, but there are some tsunamis that's going on in your life right now. And you keep wondering why, God, I haven't felt over yet. You might be wondering why, God, that I haven't lost my mind. I came to tell you to let somebody know you might just be building your house on the right foundation that no matter what comes your way, that you will be able to stand right there. No matter how bad it might get, that you can stand firmly on the word of God. I'm not going to hold you too long this morning. I'm going to give you out of here, and we're going to go on home. Um, I, I got two points for you this morning, and we're going to work this thing out. Um, the first thing here, you need to practice what you preach. You need to practice what you preach. Um, Luke 6, 46, it says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? You see here, the person has the right words, but their actions don't match their words. They have committed themselves to being a disciple of Jesus Christ, but submitting and by submitting to his lordship. At least they do it in public. At least they do it on Sunday. They called him Lord, Lord on Sunday, but their actions and their behavior might not match on Monday. Well, I'm not even going to say on Monday. It might not even match on Sunday afternoon. Many Christians are committed to becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. They called him Jesus Lord, but publicly they confess his name and they submit to his will, but their actions don't match their walk inside of life. When someone say that they are a Christian, but they don't act like it, the most we can say about them that they are not acting like a Christian. Whenever you and I sin, we are not acting like a Christian. And since we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we're all guilty of Luke chapter 6, 46, that we attend church on Sunday. And we sing that he is Lord, he is Lord, and then we follow it up that I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. But then on Monday, or on Tuesday, or even Sunday afternoon, we begin to curse folk out. We begin to do some stuff that is not godly. We begin to do some stuff that is not in the will of God. We begin to do some stuff that we're not acting the way that God will have for us to act. You at home and on Facebook, don't turn me off. You at that's on conference call, don't shut the phone off right now. But you need to stay right here. That every now and then in life, we need to practice what we preach. You tell the world that you have Christ inside of your life, but then you act foolish. You let everybody know that your hope is built on nothing less, but then you have less faith than everybody else. If you're going to build your house on the foundation of God, when storms come your way, then you need to stand firmly on the word of God. God. When the earthquakes come and they're trying to rock your world, you need to practice what you preach. You're telling everybody else that God would do it. You keep telling everybody else that God would make a way. You keep telling everybody else that God would do something. Then why don't you act like that God is working inside? I want to tell you today, if I don't get a chance to preach no more, you need to practice what you preach. If you think you got hope, then you need to let everybody know that you got hope. If you need to, you've been saying on Sunday that you got joy. When joy comes inside of your life, then you need to let the world know that I got joy, that I'm going to practice everywhere I go. I'm going to shout hallelujah everywhere I go. 
Doc already told us this morning that every now and then in our side of our lives that we need to say, God, thank you. If you're going to practice what you preach, that even when the storms comes in your life, you still need to tell God, thank you. You need to thank God for all the stuff that's inside of your life. When things are going bad, you still need to tell God, thank you. Because when they get good, you need to already practice what's going on in your life. Because one of these days, things are going to get better. One of these days, things are going to change. And while you got the chance, while you have the moment in your breath, you need to thank God for everything that God is doing in your life. Even though I got problems, I thank you, God. Even though the church might be light today, I thank you. God, even though I might every now and then do some stuff that I shouldn't do wrong, but I want to tell God thank you because I want to practice what I preach. So when storms come, I'm still going to holler. When rough times come, I'm still going to give God glory. When you talk about me, I'm still going to be who God would have. Okay. Um, I, I got to calm down a little bit. Um, lyric, I gotta gotta calm down a little bit, lyric. Um, in this final section of Christ's discipleship manual, he tells us the truth that true disciples obey him and his word. Are you his disciple? Do you obey what he says? Sometimes we are tempted to think that obedience doesn't matter. If after all, we are saved by grace through faith apart from our works. Then why should we obey God? If we get to heaven simply by believing in Jesus Christ for eternal life, then what are the benefits of his work? I want to tell you today, the benefits of your works are numerous. There are benefits of eternal reward. There are benefits in loving and glorifying God because of his great love for all of us. There's benefits for answering prayers and experiencing God at work in your life. There's benefits of loving the abundant life that God has in store for you. There's benefits for showing up on church Sunday after Sunday. There's benefits from praying to God day after day. There's benefits from fasting and giving up stuff for God. There's benefits from following Jesus. There's benefits inside of your life when you give God all the glory, when you give God all the praise. There's benefits in your life when you're doing what God has called for you to do. There are benefits. Okay, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you my point. My um, second point, obeying God provides protection. Okay, um, I'm going to say that again. Obeying God provides protection. Um, sorry, Kathy. But I'm about to add a little bit more on to point two. Um, obeying God provides protection from life storms. Okay. Since so Pat said, said it again, so I'm going to say it again. Obeying God provides protection from life storms. Brother Matthew, you caught that. Benefits. That we're going to do the things that God wants us to do. Obeying God provides protection from life's storms inside of life. In these three verses, Jesus presents a picture of two men who build a home. When a storm comes, one home collapses while the other one stands firm. Y'all missed that. We've been dealing with it all month. You missed it. Jesus presents two men who build homes when the storm comes. One house collapsed when the other one stands firm. Once the house is built by obeying Jesus Christ, it is able to weather the storms of life. I know you ain't going to say, oh man. But once the house is built by obeying Jesus Christ, it is able to weather the storms of life. Not because the, the, the house is built strong, but because you have a strong 
foundation. You missed that, so let me say it again. Once the house is built by obeying Jesus Christ, it is able to weather the storms of life, not because it's a strong house, but because it has a strong foundation. Some of y'all still miss that. Once the house is built by obeying Jesus Christ, it is able to weather the storms of life, not because it's a strong house, but it's because it has a strong foundation. Some of you still miss that. Once the house is built by obeying Jesus Christ, it is able to weather the storms of life, not because the house is so strong, but it's because of your strong foundation. And so I need to tell you today, if you are obeying Jesus Christ, then you're building up a strong foundation. If you're trusting him in your life, then you're building up a strong foundation. I don't know what storms are in your life right now. I don't know what storms you will have to face in the future. But maybe it's a financial ruin. Maybe it's a death of a spouse or a loved one. Maybe it's because somebody's slandering or gossiping or talking about you. Maybe it's a loss of job. I don't know what your storms will be, but a storm will come in your life. Jesus said that in this world, you will have trouble. So don't think, oh, that it will never happen to me. That one of these days is going to happen to you. And if you're not prepared, your life will crumble all around you. If you are not prepared and you are not ready for the storms that might come, your life might just fall. And some of you say, the Reverend Sherrod, how do I prepare for the storms that's inside of my life? That I need to obey the word of God. How do I obey the word of God? The word of God tells me when trouble comes, I can still stand firm. The word of God tells me when the winds may blow, I can stay anchored on the rock. I can be obedient to God when things get rough inside of my life because God is going to be with me. That God is going to take care of me. That God is going to guide me. So I can do when trouble come. I can still be firm on his word because I know without a shot of a doubt that God will protect me when the storms of life may come my way. And how do I know? Because God protected me on yesterday. When I had cancer, God protected me. When I almost lost my mind God protected me when I didn't have food on my table God provided for me that God was there when I didn't even understand right from wrong God was still there inside of my life and so I'm thankful today that God is still so if you have built your life on Jesus Christ and obedience to his word. When the storm comes, no matter how severe it is, no matter how the winds rage, no matter how torment the rains might fall, no matter how high and violent the river gets, you will stand strong. Sister Melissa, I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this for me. Um, hopefully y'all got it on y'all time. I'm going to say this one for me. If you build your life on Jesus Christ and obedience to his word, when the storm comes, no matter how severe it is, no matter how the winds rage, no matter how the torment or the rain falls, no matter how high or violent the river gets, you can still stand strong. <sighs> Doc, I thought I was going to get a different... I thought I was going to get a little different response than that. And so I said it for myself. Um, so this time I'm going to say it for the folk that might be at home. Because y'all don't know what y'all waiting on in here in the sanctuary. If you build your life on Jesus Christ and obedience to his word, when the storm comes, no matter how severe it is, no matter how much the wind rages, no matter how torment the rain falls, no matter how high and violent the river gets, you can still stand strong. And I'm grateful today because the storms are going to come and I can still stand strong and God is inside in my life. You can stand strong on the will of God. You can stand strong on God's word. Okay, okay. 
I forgot, Doc, we have a whole lot of educated folk um, in Free Union Church. And so some of y'all might be asking the question, why? Some of you might be asking the question, why? And so why? Not because you are so strong, but it's because Jesus Christ. Okay, y'all ready to go? You can stand firm, not because you are so strong. Not because you are all that and a bag of tips. You can stay strong because Jesus Christ is strong. And he says that he'll protect you in the storms of life that will rage in your life. He says that he'll protect you when the torment wind may bloom. That God says that he'll be right there and he'll deliver you. And so if you stand on the word of God, his word will never fail. His word will always be right there. So stand strong on God's word. Okay. I'm about out of here. Um, the end of verse 48 says, the reason the house stood firm was because it was founded on the rock. <laughs> I'm right here in the book. It's right here in the book. The end of verse 48, it says, the reason why the house stood firm was because it was founded on the rock. Okay. Read it when you get home. Read, read it when you get home. I, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying not to get too excited right here. But it says here in verse 48, it says the reason why the house stood firm was because it was founded on the rock. Okay. All right. Um, I couldn't get online to see who was watching this morning. My phone wasn't acting right. Um, that's all right. Um, but I can see y'all up inside the sanctuary today, and I only can imagine folk um, that's at home. Y'all should be waving your hands right about now. And so I'm going to tell you one more time, uh, uh, um, Brother Jerome, the end of verse 48. It says the reason that the house stood firm was because it was founded on the rock. And the person who is obedient to Jesus Christ can weather the storm because you're building your life on a rock. The rock that I'm talking about is Jesus the Christ. He is the one that you need to build your life on. He is the one that can take care of you. He is the one that can guide you. He is the one that you need to plan everything on you. I know what them people are doing in Japan, but I need to tell somebody today that you need to build your life on Jesus Christ. And so when the wind may come, you might weigh and sway each and everywhere. But I need to let you know when the wind comes, if your foundation's in Jesus Christ and you're placed on the rock, and you have been obedient to his word that he'll take care of you that he'll guide you that he'll do some stuff inside of your life and that was unexpected to you in your life but I need to tell somebody today that you can weather the storms that might come inside of your life that you can weather the tribulations that might come inside of your life you can weather them anything because you're building your church better you're making your life better because you want to do what God has called Okay, um, I'm about to get out of here, it's 10.52, I got to go. I didn't even think I was gonna be here this long. Um, some of you, I don't know if any of you um, have ever seen the show, um, Extreme Makeover, um, the home edition. Um, Y'all ever seen that show, um, the Screen Makeover, the home edition, that's on television. It's a show uh, where families that experience some disasters or tragedies get a complete remodel of their home. Uh, let me tell you again, the screen makeover, the um, home edition on television, it's a show where families that experience some great disasters or tragedy, they get a complete remodel of their home. Uh, one episode, I can remember watching um, Dick and Dinkins, the house had been completely gutted by fire. It was a home of a mother and three girls. The fire insurance was horrible, and so they didn't have enough money to even start building a new home. They all were living in the shed. And so the screen makeover crew, they came in, and they told them that they was going to read, uh, 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 
they was going to rebuild their house. And most often inside of the show, that is exactly what they do. They, 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 they rebuild, they re tear down some stuff, and they build it back up. But in this case, in this house, it wasn't nothing that they could renovate in the house. The house was burnt to a shell. Over half of it was completely gone. It was burnt away. And so the first thing that the construction crew did, they knocked down the old building. They leveled it to the ground. Once it was done, they started from scratch. They started building the house over again. Okay, so Barbara, they missed that part. So let me back up. The house was burnt to a shell. Over half of it was completely gone. It had burnt away. So what was the first thing that the construction crew did? They knocked down the old build. They leveled it. Once they were done, they started from scratch. They started building it all over again. They built this family a gorgeous house and made it completely fireproof. They built this a gorgeous house and made it completely fireproof. When the destruction is that great, there is no remodel in the world that can happen. You just need to lever it and let God, uh oh, we need to lever it and let every now and then in life, you have been through so much pain. Every now and then in life, you have been through so much stuff. Every now and then in life, you have been through so much stuff. You need to let God just lever it and build it all over again. And I need to let somebody know today, once he builds you back up, you will be better than you were in the first place. You will be better than how you used to do. You will act a certain way. You will act a different way. Because God is doing some great things inside of your life. And so I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But you need to let God tear it down and build it back up from scratch. When God builds it back up from scratch, you will have the right foundation. You will have the right walls. You will have everything you need. And when he rebuilds it, your house will be like the house that's on the stream makeover. That house was fireproof but your house will be windproof your house will be earthquake proof your house will be tsunami proof your house will be called COVID proof your house will be everything that God would need it to be because God is the one who built your house and if God built your house you don't have to worry about any winds you don't have to worry about any waves you don't have to worry about anything because God built your I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of here. That we're building the church better. That if you're building your church better, you need to make sure you practice what you preach. Don't just come to church on Sunday and act churchy on Sunday. But when you leave out on these doors, because I realize some of you, you know, you already not acting church by the time you even get to your car. That even sometimes inside this church doors, you ain't even practicing what you preach. But if you're going to be obedient to God's will and practice what you preach, then you're going to let God change your life and let God change your situation and let God change your mind because God is the one that's in control of your life. I know you want to be in control, but if you're going to say yes to his will and yes to his way, then you need to let God construct your life on how he wants to construct it. You need to let your like God build your house how God wants to build it. You need to let God do what God needs to do in your house. And if God decides to tear it down and rebuild it back up. You need to trust and believe that your house will be firm on a firm foundation that you need to build your house on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his blood. Because if you build on him, no matter what comes your way, everything will be if you're here today. You never accepted Christ as your personal savior. If you're here today, you're looking for a church home. If you're here today, you don't know which way to do, which way to turn, 
you've been trying to build your house yourself. I don't know about you. Um, construction is not my forte. Um, I can do some stuff inside the house that I probably shouldn't do. I can change out a few light fixtures and stuff. Um, I can't even really put the plaster on the wall and do all that stuff. But I've come to let somebody know today. Um, I, 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 I had a guy to come to the house one time, uh, Mr. Watkins. I um, had a hole inside of the wall. And when I had a hole inside of my wall, um, it was a hole about yay big. The man, he cut around the hole. And I said, man, you're making a hole in the wall bigger than what it was for. He said, every now and then, I got to make the hole a little bigger so I can replace it. He said, every now and then, the hole might be small, but I got to make it a little bigger and so I can replace it and make it look right. Uh, Brother Matthew, after the man put some little putty on it, he did some other stuff on it. I went back downstairs, Sister Alicia. It looked terrible. It looked worse than really did in the first place. But then all of a sudden, the man got some sandpaper. He began to smooth that thing out. He began to smooth it. And then I went back upstairs, and I came back later. Um, Brought by James Tears. I didn't even know where the hole was. Y'all missed that. Every now and then in life, you might go through some stuff. You might have some holes. God might make the hole a little bigger, but he gonna, might have to put some sandpaper on it to rub some stuff out. But when God finished with it, folk ain't going to know where the hole was inside of your life because God made you even better. Than if you're here today, I got to go, Marcus. Stop, Marcus. I got to go. If you're here today, uh, but you never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, I want to offer Christ to you on this morning. He is the one who can build you back up. He's the one that when you're torn down, you can do some stuff in life. Because some of you, years past, I'm about to go. Some of you in the years past, uh, when you first became saved, or when you was a little girl, a little boy, if a coronavirus would have came around, it would have took you out. Because your faith wasn't where it is today. But some of you today, you thought some other stuff was going to take you out and ain't nothing took you out yet. Because you have you realized that your foundation is secure on Jesus Christ. And then some of us come to realize in order for me to see Jesus, <laughs> I got to leave this place. And if the God decides to take me today, I'll see him face to face. And that means my life is even better than what it is right now. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I think I got a great life. I got a son who pay attention most of the time. I got a wife who, who listen most of the time. <laughs> I got a church family who love me most of the time. And I think I got everything going on. But one of these days, this is just a preview. Just a preview. And I come to realize if you can't handle it down here, how can you handle it when you get to heaven? When they say that every day is like Sunday, Sabbath will have no end. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Just want to offer Christ to you today that he can build your life when the winds and the storms come your way. Yeah, you might sway a little bit, but you can stand firmly on his word. Because I, everyone that's on the sound of my voice on conference call, YouTube, Facebook, trouble will come. And I'll let you have your moment or two. But your moment or two shouldn't be years and years and years. You should have your moment or two, and then you begin to realize where your help come from. And your help comes from the master. I only can imagine that when you are laying on your back, every now and then God makes it no other choice for you to call on him. Y'all miss that? You can't call on your friends. You can't call on your neighbors. Because you ain't got your cell phone. And all you can do is just call on the master. So if you're here, you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, just put it down in the comments. It's me. It's me. We'll make sure we get in contact with you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we want to build our lives better. And God, we come to realize, God, if we don't have you inside of our lives, then we're building on shaky foundation. But God, if we have you in our lives, 
then God, then we are building our lives on a rock. That God, first we got to come to you, God, and then we God, we got to hear your word, and then God, we got to be doers of your word, and then God, we got to go forth and practice what we've been talking about. And then God, we got to realize, God, that you're going to protect us in the storms of life, that you'll be right there and you'll guide us. God, there's somebody that's on Facebook. There's somebody on YouTube. There's somebody on conference call. There's somebody in the sanctuary today that's going through some stuff, God. And God, they forgot that you was their help. God, they've been trying to do it themselves. And so, God, we thank you for reminding us on today that you are the one that can fix it. That you are the one that can take care of it. You are the one that we got to put all of our faith in. So, God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, we thank you to every one of you for being um, a part of our service on the day. Um, it's 11.05. I kept you a little bit over. Uh, but I do kind of realize, I was telling Dinkins Dink earlier today, when I was a little boy, we didn't start church till 11 o'clock. And then sometimes, Sister Michelle, I ain't getting home about 6 o'clock that afternoon. We got sophisticated now. Uh, we want to get out of church service in an hour. We want to get out of church service in 30 minutes. But we have to go back to the old time ways and just let God do what God has to do. God didn't put a, he didn't put a time limit on it. He just gave us a day that we can come and worship him. Just come and worship him. And we got to worship him freely. Dick, I heard you, Dick and Holmes, I heard you. This is a day that we can just come forth and just say, God, thank you. Thank you for all you do inside of our lives. And so this next week as we commit, um, go forth in our fast, and some of you say, Rev, I ain't been doing it yet. Well, this is a good time to start. Start with us today. Start with us tomorrow. Just end up with us on our fast from 66. Um, and I don't know if I, I, I look back at my notes on my iPad, and I normally uh, put everything in my iPad. Um, I don't remember thanking y'all for all of the Christmas stuff that y'all did for Monica and I. Um, all the cars and all that stuff. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for how y'all continue to bless us and how y'all all continue to make us feel loved. Um, thank y'all for all that you do. Um, um, and I tell y'all this all the time. Um, I think I tell y'all this all. I'll tell y'all this most of the time anyway. Um, when I first came to Free Union, um, I can't. I remember Sister Alicia that Wednesday night. Uh, uh, um, you sitting about where you sitting at now. Your brother sitting right like close to you. We had a good time in Bible study. Um, folk fell in love with me um, that day. And we've been in love ever since. And I'm grateful to God. I, I, I used to think uh, 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 um, that love was going to fall off. But I can't wait. And I'm just excited that the love is still there. Um, that we're going to be on our honeymoon for the next 25 years. Um, that we're going to continue to go forth and do what God would have us to do. I mean, every, every, every problem, every, you know, always situations may come about. But I do believe that we love each other. And we're going to go forth and do what all God would have for us to do. And so Free Union, um, just in case you don't know it, I love being the pastor of Free Union Baptist Church. I love being a pastor. I always wanted to know how it would be to be a pastor. Now that I am, this is, this is all right with me. Um, Sister Lawrence, this is all right with me. I've um, been the pastor of the historic Free Union Church. And I kind of realized because folk love me and because I have a loving church. Uh, we might bicker, but we don't, we don't fight. We ain't got to bring no police to the, no, the church meetings. We ain't got to bring police. No, no, we just love it. And I'm so grateful to God. And it was all because we're building the church better. When you come in with the foundation of Jesus Christ, then everything else will work out. When you're at the place where God wants you to be, everything else will work itself out. And so I'm grateful, grateful, grateful grateful to God. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and bow with each one of us until we all can meet again like this. Let us all say amen and amen. 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 Thank y'all. Thank you.